way and get out of here because um, I'm just trying to make them all look really, really good. Okay. Um, so I decided recently that I need a new hobby. Looking for a new hobby. Um, I couldn't think of anything, but I decided I'm just gonna start murdering people. Who's murder? No, no, no. But let me explain. Because well, some people are just like, yes. But no, I'm gonna explain. I'm only gonna murder the people that deserve it. The people that are kind of asking for it, honestly. Yeah. People that listen to true crime podcasts. Because <laughs> that's worthy quarry. Yeah. What else have they been training for? <laughs> and like, now we will never have to hear about true crime podcasts ever again. <laughs> oh, God. I, um... So, I've been trying to be healthier. Is anyone else, like, still trying to work? We've given up our, like, our New Year's resolutions. We try, oh no, some people are trying to just be healthier. That was my, my resolution, just in general. Mostly because I just figured out recently that the only plant-based thing I did was drugs. Yeah. And, but, I mean, if I could freebase some Parmesan cheese, I would be doing that shit. I would be doing that shit all day. Oh, y'all do not like my casual Parmesan cheese freebasing jokes. That's okay. It's, it's okay. It's okay. Everyone here like looks really cool. Like this is always like the coolest audience that I um, do comedy in front of. Always. Like I know that all of you would know how, like who to sell the Adderall or whatever. Like that's yeah. That's just the cool. Uh, yeah. This is cool audience. It's not. None of you Pinterest. It's like, oh, it's a whole thing. The camera's really full. Like, the camera's really throwing me off. Man, I did not know this was, was going to be a thing. Uh, this is my American Idol audition. Oh. How are you all doing tonight? Good. Good. I was talking to these two people specifically, but I like all of the, <laughs> I like all of the enthusiasm. Um, I, I really need new friends. I need new friends. I need new friends because uh, all of the friends that I have are way too into astrology when I have real problems. So, it always goes something like this. I get these conversations like, Francesca, Mercury's in retrograde, the moon's in Sagittarius. And I'm like, Karen, I just need you to prove me this cover letter can't, I can't. I also don't think it's fair that all of my friends, all of them, are atheists. Or my atheist dad in the house. Woo! Yeah, all of my friends are atheists, yet they all believe in ghosts. I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair that I've been over at your house at 3 o'clock in the morning because you, you thought you felt a weird cold spot in the wall. No. No, it's not fair. Um, actually, do you want to be my friend? Can you be my friend? Can you be my friend? Yes. How many crystals do you own? <laughs> See, that's the right answer. You have to have three or under crystals to be my friend. So, recently I went to the store and I purchased CBD seltzer water. I'm going to repeat that for everyone. When I bought CBD seltzer water, the thing I paid for. So I'm both Jamaican and Chinese. And I felt all of my ancestors sit up and look at me in disapproval. And I knew, I knew already, like all the Jamaican ancestors were like, Francesca, that is not proper use of ganja. And all of my Chinese ancestors were just pissed that I spent eight dollars on a bunch of fizzy water to watch Mulan on Disney Plus. No, no. I like. Um, I actually like it when people ask me about being like multiracial, mixed race, mixed race, biracial, whatever. Like it's kind of like getting credit for work you didn't do. It's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome, right? Right? Um, yeah. People tend to like it. It's it's basically like being a golden doodle. Yeah. <laughs> 
<sighs> so I'm gonna get off on here on this one and bring out some some of the best comics in Richmond. Yes, yeah, I'm really excited. Okay. Do y'all know what ghosting is? Yeah. Some people, yeah. Okay, I have to ask because the Newport News they did not know. <laughs> everyone's still using everyone's still using beepers there. It's a very confusing place. Um, anyway, so ghosting is when you're texting with someone, you like them, and you text with them, and you hear back from them, never. How do I feel about ghosting? <laughs> oh, sometimes in a crowd like this, there's like a, there's someone like that's like it's fine. And it's like, oh, and they're always like really hot. And it's like, oh, you're the, you're the ghosting person. Okay, yeah, we don't like ghosting. I don't like ghosting because of the name. That's not what ghosts do. The whole point of a ghost is they never leave people alone. They haunt you. So, this is what we need to do. We need to rebrand this. We need to call something else. I think we should call it Bigfooting. <laughs> because Bigfoot is this big, hairy, mythical creature that you become obsessed with that all of your friends is convinced does not exist. <laughs> Guys, you've been a great audience. Please, let's welcome our first comic to the stage, a very funny lady. Recently um, did Women Press Wednesdays over at the Funny Bone. She just headlined over at Castleburg. Game of Jokes. She's a beast. Who's on the stage? Leela Humans. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Hello. How's everyone doing? Yeah. I think it's so cool seeing you guys all here today. You're so brave, you know, coming out in public when you know what's going on. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? Daylight saving. <laughs> That's going to be rough for me tomorrow. I'm a teacher, you know? It's going to be bad. And it's really cool to people see people here listening to comedy. Like Francesca said, I need some new friends, too. They're not supportive of my comedy at all. No, they think this is like my like irresponsible hobby or my post-divorce breakdown or something. <laughs> When I told them about coming here tonight, I was like, hey, you should go. And they're like, wow, you still do that? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And they said, why don't you just have an affair with a married man like Tracy? <laughs> and I was like, wow, you think it would be better for me to have an affair than do comedy? And they said, yeah, Tracy doesn't make us watch. <laughs> Yeah, they think I should be spending more time on my career and my family. Like, definitely teaching is hard, but I do love it. You know, I got into it for all the usual reasons because I really, really love summer vacation. And I do love the kids. There are perks to teaching that you wouldn't expect, you know. I really love confiscating notes from children. I do. It's super fun. Because it reminds me of reality TV. Does anyone like reality TV here? Any fans? Just me? I love Bravo, and those classes, they remind me of mini Bravo shows. And those notes, you get to know who's beefing with who, who's got a crush on who, and I'm here for all of it. I love it. Yeah. Like, this boy dropped a note. It was to a girl in my class, and... He said, I want to go out with you. And that made me wonder, where do 10-year-olds go out? <laughs> if I had to guess from like the essays I've graded on my favorite place to go, I'd say Golden Corral. <laughs> they love that place. But if I was going to give them advice, I'd tell them to go to a brewery, because I think that would be a good date. And I don't think you guys agree with me right now. <laughs> But hear me out, there's usually like an entire wall of games. So like the kids could get to know each other, they could play oversized Jenga or Cards Against Humanities or something like that. And then the moms could do flights in the corner because those kids are going to need a ride. <laughs> and if one of the moms dating, she could multitask and she could schedule her Tinder date at the same time. It would be smart because she wouldn't need a sitter 
you know, the mom and the kid, they could dress alike, it would be adorable. And nothing says I'm ready for a long-term relationship like a double date with a 10-year-old at a brewery, right? <laughs> like, I feel like you could take that girl home to my mom. She's got family values. But they don't ask me. But back to that note, the boy, he said to the girl, I need to talk to you. Meet me at the bus loop. And she replied, no, all caps, double exclamation marks. Which, to a lot of guys, is playfully ambiguous. <laughs> but I took the note, it didn't matter. And I forgot all about it until I got to the bus loop. And the buses were getting ready to pull away, and there's poor James, all forlorn, next to bus 13. So I was like, oh shit, I need to go do some. So I ran over to him and I said, hey James, she's not coming, man. And he was like, what? I said, Jasmine, she's not into you. Get on the bus. But he wasn't moving. And then the buses started their engines and they were closing the doors, so I knew I had to work fast. So I said, hey, Jasmine, she said no, but I took a note from Haley and she just broke up with Jade. <laughs> I heard she's got a crush on you. And he said, really? Because fifth grade hearts men fast. <laughs> and I said, yeah, really. I said, you should go home, give her a call, send her a TikTok, whatever you kids are doing now, but get on the bus. And he was so happy. He said, thanks, Miss Yeoman. And he turned around and got on the bus. It was awesome. I was so happy. I had to laugh a little as that bus drove away because Haley never rode that way. <laughs> I made all that up. You know, because in reality TV, sometimes the producer needs to push that story along. <laughs> yeah, all the notes in fifth grade aren't cute like that, though. You know, sometimes they're really bad. This note I picked up one time. Brace yourself. It was a full page erotic fan fiction written by this boy about two kids in my class. Yeah, it was really bad. Like, I felt like I was doing something wrong being in possession of that man. I gave it to the administrator and I was so mad. I was so pissed at that kid. I felt betrayed. Like, I had no idea he was capable of doing that. Because you know that little asshole didn't write one word for his county assessment essay? <laughs> and it was, the topic was a ring with magic powers. He could have done a lot with that. <laughs> Kids are lazy. <laughs> it's hard being a teacher, you know? It's hard being a parent, too. I'm a single parent. I've got two teenagers at home. And they say that raising girls is harder than boys, but I don't feel like that's the case. Like my son, he's 14, and he's got a lot of questions that I don't know how to answer. Like he came to me, he asked me things like, hey, how do I find girls? How do I go out with girls with these hairy legs and this weird voice? And do girls also have hairy nipples? <laughs> Yeah, I just tell him it'll get better, but will it? <laughs> I think he's a good looking kid, he's tall, but do parents know when their kids are ugly? <laughs> I can tell you as a teacher, parents don't know when their kids are stupid. <laughs> I do know he's got no game at all, he's really bad. Like, he came to me and he said, Hey mom, should I ask a girl if she has herpes on the first date? Oh. Yeah, I was like, wow. Um, I guess it depends on whether you want a second date. <laughs> See, I'm bad at this. I'm not good. Like, I didn't have good role models for this kind of thing. Like, my mom was a hippie. She showed my brother how to put a condom on a squash at the dinner table. <laughs> And that's valuable information, but it's delivered very awkwardly. <laughs> I don't want to be that mom. 
Also, I feel like a zucchini sets unreal expectations for all of us. <laughs> like, my first hand job was a huge surprise. <laughs> I mean, huge was probably the wrong word for that. <laughs> I thought I was going to get help because he started family life. And that's what they call sex ed now. So I was like, phew, that's over. But the very first day he came home, he said, hey, mom, I've got homework. He said, we're supposed to ask our parents what abstinence is. I was mad. I was mad, you know, because I don't, I don't get to tell my students to go home and ask their parents what algebra is. So I was ticked. I just told him, hey, if we knew what abstinence was, we wouldn't be your parents. <laughs> there you go, Coach King, that's bad in your court. <laughs> but if I'm not helping him, he's definitely not helping me. My son is a huge cock block. <laughs> and that also might not be the right word for a boy and his mom, but I know that no cocks are getting into my house and it's really frustrating. But he tells me he does not want me to date. He says, I don't want some guy around telling me what to do all the time, and I understand that. You know, I'm not looking for a new father for him. I'm looking for a daddy for me. <laughs> you guys have all been really great tonight. I'm Lily Yeomans. Welcome our host back. I'm your second host, Mike Engel. I'm going to warm everybody up with some bits. Cops are out of control, okay? We got some, we got A-caps in here, we got some 12 13s in here. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's sticky rice on a Sunday, okay? They're out of control. I was walking the other day, and I see this penny on the ground, and I, I go to pick it up, and right behind me, Excuse me, sir, excuse me, you are under arrest. And I'm like, I was just picking up this penny. I mean, gee, it was it was heads up, that's good luck. It wasn't even on a crack. I'm not gonna break my mother's back. I, I just thought it was okay to pick up this penny. And he's like, you are under arrest. And I'm like, why? And he's like, for bending with intent to grab. <laughs> then he stopped and frisked me, okay? And then I'm like, citizens arrest, citizens arrest, good sir, you are under arrest for bending with intent to grab. He was a very tall cop. And I am a small man, S-M-O-L, small man. Small hairy man, Mike Engel is. You ever had to call the cops on Jesus? Officer? Jesus touched me. Classic. <laughs> Classic shit. Um, I have sex, okay? I have sex. And when I do, I have sex like an animal, okay? And that animal is a snail. It's really slow, really sticky, a lot of residue. And if you sprinkle a little salt on me during, I will shrivel up and die. <laughs> moving on, moving on. Listen, ladies, can we agree on this? Men need to stop telling ladies to smile more. All right, yeah, let's stop that shit. Get that shit out of my, yeah, get that shit out of here. Me, Mike Engel, I can relate, okay? Because people tell me, to open my eyes more all the time. They are permanently just a slant and we still exist. So what am I gonna do? I, I am who I am. I know my problems. There could be the most bodacious butt in front of my face and I'm just eating the pussy from behind because that's what I do. I eat the pussy from behind and the lady, she turns around, she's like, Mike, I'm gonna need you to open your eyes, good sir. That's the type of ladies I have sex with. They say good sir in bed, okay? <laughs> like, good sir, you gotta open your eyes. If they have you rooting around back there all willy-nilly. 
<laughs> and I'm like, I can't listen to this. I'm high, but also I sweat a lot. There's a lot of sweat going on on my face area. People, people don't say that to me. They don't say open your eyes more. They do say to me, good luck with your oxycodone addiction. Okay, that's what they say to me. And um, I take that as a compliment because oxycodone sounds like a drug that I absolutely cannot afford. I cannot afford oxycodone, okay? A lot of people think that I am on heroin, okay? But here's the thing about me and heroin. If I were on it, I would be at home right now doing heroin. I would need your approval. I would need a comedy show for giggles and laughs. I'm a marijuana boy, okay? <laughs> and a marijuana boy I'll always be. 420, blaze it. Yeah! 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 Um, I had a, had a lady once I was talking to, and I'm like, um, hey, lady, so uh, you into butt stuff? And she's like, yeah, I'll eat your ass. That was a little bit of a thinker. Also a stinker. We all know it's true. We all know. Um, this one's a little dark. We'll get out on a dark one, but it is my signature topic. Pizza, okay? Pizza! What happens when a delivery man's on the way to a house and a suicide occurs? I'll tell you what happens. The guy gets the, guy gets the doorbell. He's ringing. Ring. Ring. If he's generous, he'll wait another 30 seconds. A final ring. One man's suicide is another man's pizza. Okay, that's a free pizza! You can make suicide. <laughs> Just involve food! Alrighty, everybody. You guys ready for your next comic? Yes, we warmed up. You're having a good time. Everyone, get it up to the wonderful. Colby Knight, do it up for us! Oh my god, how's it going, guys? Just gonna get this right out of the way, off the bat. I, I know what we're all thinking. I look like I work at Home Depot and I sound like I work at Michael's. <laughs> But I went, I went to Christian school, so I'm just going to go work at Hobby Lobby now. That's how that works. Uh, I am, I'm really happy to be here. I'm in, I'm in a great mood because you guys, I did it. I left Lynchburg. <laughs> Thank you. That's the right response. I realized I had to move. It came to a head. I was sitting in my car in a parking lot on the other side of the river because the city doesn't look like garbage from that angle. <laughs> And then I saw a bonfire. I'm like, oh, that's nice. A fire on the bank of the James. Seems like a good time. And then I saw a bunch of white dudes get around it. And I thought, oh, this must just be a Liberty University thing. <laughs> and then I saw pointy white hoods come out. And I thought, oh, this is definitely a Liberty University thing. <laughs> Uh, I'm kidding. They don't wear pointy white hoods. They wear vineyard vine shirts and live in Charlottesville. That's <laughs> <laughs> to escape the racism, I moved to Charlottesville like a fucking idiot. <laughs> Which means the only place I've been where you can get like artisanal handcrafted kombucha and Confederate flags <laughs> in the same store. Like it doesn't. I've never seen a skinhead with a man bun until I came to Charlottesville. <laughs> It's just a suction cup on the back of it. You know what they're doing? This is Charlottesville's where they dip crosses in essential oils before they light them on fire. That's <laughs> what <laughs> they're doing in Charlottesville. I, love, I, I feel right at home there. Because, like, look at me. I'm so white, I clap out of rhythm when the plane lands. So. <laughs> I'm in my home. I, I'm from New Hampshire, which is 98% white, surpassed only by Maine's 98.5% white. Growing up, I thought Dora's skin color was a stylistic choice. <laughs> Didn't know minorities were a thing. Yeah, I'm from New Hampshire, uh, and that means a couple things. That meant uh, for a lot of a lot of time here, I used to have to drive up and down the East Coast several times a year. And uh, I don't know how many of you guys have been in like South Central Pennsylvania. God has abandoned it. <laughs> you get to these stretches of road, it's just like a horse. There's just unintended horses, couches on the side of the road. You see mile after mile of just sheepskin billboard, strip club billboard, sheepskin billboard, strip club. I expect there to be a glitch and to see a billboard of the sheep with six pairs of bras on it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it. This is like Amish country. This is 
is supposed to be the most puritanical part of our society, and you can't throw a rock without hitting a strip club. And I was thinking about that, I'm like, I, don't, I can't imagine getting down to pour some molasses on me, play it on a washboard and violin. But uh, I gotta start thinking about it, and I'm like, no, maybe an Amish strip club is better. Here's all this other anticipation they gotta build up, like they gotta like unbuckle the hat and everything, right. <laughs> I don't get it. I really, I really don't get it. Uh, because it, may, it makes sense, though. So, uh, religious people have had problems following all their own rules for all of history. I don't know how many of you guys have actually read Leviticus. It has to tell you several times not to have sex with animals. <laughs> That's not in there because they weren't doing it. <laughs> this is back when polygamy was fine in the Jewish religion. Like, they could have had any woman in their nation and some dude sees a sheep with six pairs of bras on. <laughs> like, looks pretty good to me. They're all southern. <laughs> he at least had a friend who was like, dude, no way, you can't. And he's like, yeah, wait, and just went for it. <laughs> I, th I, think, I think the point behind all this is that the, uh, the desert the Israelites were wandering in was West Virginia. <laughs> Ooh, some of you aren't laughing. You might not realize this is a fun, this is a hundred percent true. In the state of West Virginia, you can legally have sex with any animal so long as it's under 50 pounds. <laughs> Am I the only person that thinks that's the wrong side of 50 pounds? <laughs> I didn't do that well in high school math, but the alligator mouth is eating the wrong number. And that's, that means something... <laughs> It means something that I don't like to think about. In the state of West Virginia, you can't bang an animal that can take it. But if you want to split a hamster in half, it's your God-given state-protected right to do so. As long as it's a pretty girl hamster, am I right? With six pairs of bras on. Where was I going with any of this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I, uh, actually, this is fun. Thinking back in the last year, uh, this has been almost a year. Actually, it's been over a year since I got engaged. Which is, uh, yeah, thanks. We broke up, so you're an asshole. <laughs> no, no, it's a good thing. It should have ended. Uh, I realized after the fact that she was asexual. Uh, being the weird-ass Liberty student that I was, I figured she was just waiting. She was for death. <laughs> That's where I am now. Uh, it's not, I don't know, I'm not good at being single. This is the first time I've been single in six years. Uh, it's not good. My room currently looks like I'm building the world's shittiest hurricane relief barrier out of Taco Bell bags. <laughs> I don't know if I'm really good at being in relationships either. I'm not one of those dudes that's like, ah, I have opinions on things. Like, uh, you can treat me however you want. It's not good. I, I'm like, uh, I, obviously, I pee sitting down, like, in the woods, where there's no precedent for that. Like, I feel like if I was, uh, like, in a, in a cuck situation with someone else's marriage, I still wouldn't be the dude fucking the wife. But yeah, no, uh, we, you, we were just looking for a somewhat sad limp dick guy, and we went with, uh, lame Violent J from ICP over here. Works out really well. Uh, I'm not, I don't have hard opinions. I'm like, I'm basically like a rescue boyfriend, essentially. I was happy to be inside and not out the, outside the goddamn Sarah McLaughlin commercial I was just in. Yeah, they have shelters for rescue boyfriends. We put ourselves down. That's it. That's a, that's a thing. I don't know, I had, I've had one relationship sort of since then. Uh, and it was, she was bisexual, which is, I'd never been with someone who was bisexual before. Uh, and it was good because, like, if she squinted her eyes during sex, I had bigger tits than she did. So, <laughs> that's over. Back to, back to being sick. This is my first Valentine's Day alone in eight years this year. Uh, yeah, it's not. Yeah, I, I don't know how many of you guys have ever gotten to the point where you manually engage the seatbelt lock on your car because it feels like a hug. <laughs> I have. The sad part is it worked. I don't know how. <laughs> It's not good. Uh, I, I'm sad, but I know no matter how bad it gets, I can never go on medication. And I know this because my friend just got on antidepressants and told me that if he eats a grapefruit, he could die. It's 
too bad I got weird sticky rice. That's exactly what I need, is to finally want to live and then stumble upon death in a La Quinta Inn breakfast buffet. <laughs> That's all I want to go out in the breakfast of a 1930s anorexic housewife. <laughs> I, know, I know I look like I've lived my life like I thought vegetables could kill me. <laughs> Turns out it was fruit the whole time. Uh, yeah, uh, it, it was weird to think about because beforehand, if you wanted to kill yourself, you'd have to like shoot yourself, which happens in a garage typically, or hang yourself with people do in a garage, or wreck your car in the garage. Am I the only one that finds it weird you have to have a garage to kill yourself? <laughs> yeah, no, I think that's the only reason millennials still exist at this point. And we can't afford property, let alone property with a garage. <laughs> yeah, and at that point the question has to be asked, are millennials killing the suicide industry, or is the suicide industry killing itself? <laughs> I have been COVID, you guys have been very fun, thank you so much, have a good night guys. to buy the man a weighted blanket, yes. <laughs> okay, next up we have one of my very favorite funny people. I have his name written out phonetically in my book. Please welcome the stage, Adam Piedini. Hello, hello. I am honored to be the token minority on the show tonight. That's right, I am Italian. I have a very hard to pronounce last name. When I was younger, kids would bully me and call me different types of pasta. I got called Adam Liguini, Adam Tortellini. There was one kid who didn't get it and he called me Adam Lomain. I did not appreciate that, that sucks. Look, I'm tired of the bullying, I'm tired of the name calling. So tonight, I'm going to teach everyone here the correct, the correct <laughs> pronunciation. What you need to do is take your first two fingers and your thumb and hold them up in the air like this. And then you picture yourself as a chef who has just made the most perfect pizza of their entire life. And now that you're channeling that energy, all I have to do is say it. Can we say it on three? One, two, three. Epstein didn't kill himself! <laughs> hey, a crowd of quick learners. I like that. I like that a lot. People make a lot of stereotypes about my family. They say, oh, you're Italian. You'll run the mafia. That is not true. We are way too incompetent for that. Like, my brother was arrested this previous summer for underage drinking. The easiest crime in the world to get away with. It's like stealing candy from a baby, except you don't even have to get babies involved. It's just on your own. And I'm not much better than him. I just found out what racketeering was. Before today, I just thought it was a very specific type of cat calling. Like, hey, nice rap. It's top tier. <laughs> I grew up with a very strict family. Uh, there was a lot of stuff I couldn't do when I was younger. Like, my dad would let me read the newspaper. And I would go up to him on Saturday mornings and say, please, let me read Snoopy. I want to read Snoopy. And he'd fold down his paper, look at me, and say, Adam, I can't let you read the comics. You're allergic to peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. No, uh, my mom and my dad are the textbook definition of helicopter parents. They're way overprotective of me. I was not allowed to have a cell phone or social media well into high school. And they explained it to me. They said, Adam, we want to protect you from men preying on children. Well, they goofed up. Because they sent me to Catholic school. Yeah. The only way they could have screwed that up worse is if they said, Adam, we're going to give you something to do this summer. We're going to toughen you up. You're going to football camp at Penn State. Go get them. No. Uh, I'm bad at first impressions. I have to work on it. It's especially tough because of my last name. I started a job this year where they took my picture and they asked me to write a biography so I could meet the company. So I said, hello, my name is Adam Piedini. I work as an engineer. 
I do stand-up comedy in my free time. And if you ever call me by something on the Olive Garden menu, I'm gonna bash your fucking brains in with a stapler. Relax, everyone. I would never tell a coworker that I do stand-up comedy. <laughs> Uh, I have to travel for work on occasion. Now, I have friends with cool jobs, and they get to go to places like Portland, or Los Angeles, the City of Angels. I had to go to Stanton, Virginia, which is the city of clowns who live in the sewers and eat children. <laughs> now, for my job, I expect utilities, which means I walk around outside wearing a safety vest, and I have a clipboard with me, and you need a lot of interest when you're trespassing. I was walking this one man's backyard. He had a truck in the driveway with gum stickers all over it. And he had a yellow flag hanging from his house, the one with the coiled snake on it. And he comes outside and growls at me, can I help you? I was like, oh shit, this dude's gonna kill me. So I calmly explained who I was, what I was doing there. I was gonna be out of his hair in five minutes tops. And then he just goes back inside. I was pissed off. Sir, the flag on your house says don't tread on me. And here I am, on your property, <laughs> treading. <laughs> I really wish that I had told him that I was there to confiscate his firearms, just to see how far it would have gone. Because if you can't handle me coming to take your guns, what are you gonna do when Obama shows up? <laughs> Does anyone here remember their first job? One person. Well, two, two people, maybe. Uh, yes, thank you. It, it was incredibly difficult for me to get hired when I was in high school. No one would take me seriously because I didn't look old enough. Without facial hair, I looked 10 years younger. So right now, I would look 16. And when I was actually 16, I looked like a twink. For those of you who don't know, a twink is a gay man with the body of Pinocchio. And I am 100% certain I only got a job as a diversity hire because I worked at Chick-fil-A. And there's no way I didn't walk into that restaurant on the day of my interview and the manager, manager did say to himself, wow, we could really use a homosexual in here. You gonna switch gears now? I used to have a joke about getting Michael Bloomberg ads, but guess what? He dropped out. Bye-bye, loser. Bye-bye. It's, it's kind of hard to criticize Michael Bloomberg without sounding extremely anti-Semitic. Like, he controls the media, but not in that way, though. Just the regular way. God, I'm very glad the Democratic primaries are almost up. People were acting up on social media, and it was, it was making me upset. This one girl I knew, she posted, if you're a progressive and you didn't vote for Elizabeth Warren, you're a sexist. I, I don't agree with that. Look, I am not a misogynist because I voted for Bernie Sanders over Elizabeth Warren. I'm a misogynist because I told Amy Klobuchar that I want to wear her panties like a bane mask. All right? Let's set the record straight. To get my mind off of politics, I like to go to the movies. And I love the trailers. I always make sure I uh, get there early for those. And the best one that I've seen recently is a sci-fi movie set in the way future where the International Space Station is used as a prison for all of Earth's most vile sex offenders. And at the same time, President Barron Trump uses a space force to deport all the Mexicans. And then the two ships collide. And the title flashes across the screen. Illegal alien versus child predator. <laughs> Got it. Uh, I've been watching a lot of Harry Potter recently. And in those movies, they repeat the same thing over and over again. The worst thing you can call another wizard is a mudblood. Let me repeat. The worst thing you can call another wizard is a mudblood. They have black kids at Hogwarts. <laughs> okay.
Thank you so much, Dickie Rice. You are all beautiful people. I'm out of PDE. Let's bring up my angle. Yay! Yeah! One more time for Adam, everybody. Oh, yeah, get up, Bora! Now, up to this point in the show, you might have been, this comedy show is not scary enough, okay? It might not be scary enough, but let me assure you this next comic, he left his big blue ox babe back in Galax, Virginia. He's here for you tonight. Everyone, give it up for Jake Snyder, everybody! Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know why everyone scared me all the time. I should not be standing up here. I don't need this. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Who was drinking tonight? Y'all drinking tonight? Oh, fuck yeah, I love drinking. One of my favorite things to do is like, uh, I'm trying to control it right now because I do have to drive a school bus to try to keep it down right now. <laughs> it's not my job, but everybody has to have a hobby. Am I right, folks? That's good. <laughs> I do control my drinking nowadays, though, is I have a diet with my drinking. It's like a point system kind of associated with it, with Weight Watchers. Like, uh, it's like uh, the more uh, drinks I have, more points end up on my driver's license. So I'm to keep that down right now. For not a good scenario to be in. Like I do like uh, I like drinking beer. Uh, my favorite place to drink typically is like more uh, where degenerates hang out. You know, a, a place you can go to and order the same drink three times in a row. It shows up a different container each time. <laughs> I want three shots, bartender. All right, you get the Myrtle Beach commemorative shot glass. <laughs> you get a Yahtzee shaker. You get a Dixie cup. This is how this works out. I am, I still drink a lot, but like I have friends that. Used to drink a lot, I'm trying to cut back now, and they call to me. He's like, "Hey, uh, I drink all the time. I would black out every night, and I made all these regretful decisions. And I come talk to you about it because I know you're probably doing the same thing." Nope, I'm really good at drinking. That's just never affected me at all. I "I think you have a drinking problem, Jake. Really, I have the drinking problem. Is he here? There was one blackout I've ever had in my life. It was after I drank two bottles of bourbon." I got home safely, made taquitos, and turned the oven back off. I'm a responsible drunk. <laughs> Kevin, on the other hand, had one too many mimosas during a brunch and punched a bus driver in the back of the head. And I'm wrong with a drinking problem, apparently. <laughs> Christ Almighty. But it is the same thing. I'm a man of many vices. Y'all smoke weed too? Some weed? And wait. That seems like a lot less than I for weed. That, seems about, that sounds about right. I'll give you all some advice. If you smoke weed in your apartment and try to use Febreze to mess the scent, that shit doesn't work. I'll come to your place now and just smell like weed and Febreze. You're not fooling anybody. I just walk in there and it smells like tropical breeze and tropical breeze. You're not, just, not getting that past anybody. Speaking of weed, I was at a Rona doing a show and it's, some lady offered me a vegan cookie. Oh uh, yeah, ink, ink, win, win, nose, nose, all that jazz. So I ate it. And it was actually a vegan cookie. What the fuck? Hey, the shitty tasting cookie didn't even get high. It lied to me on two fronts. You can't have that. Uh, I'm a weird kind of dude. Uh, as Mike mentioned before, I come from Galax, Virginia. No one knows where that is. It's good for you. <laughs> it is the world capital of old time mountain music, if you're not aware. Uh, the longest running movie at the local cinema was Ernest Saves Christmas. That's not how much that I come from. It's a fucked up town, like a fucked up high school I went through too. Like uh, my senior year, when the teachers got uh, arrested for uh, because he was trying to buy me of a student. Like, dude, that's fucked up. You're the teacher. You can just bribe a student for the weed. They have the power in that situation. Hey kid, you wanna pass this class? You gotta pass this class. Come on, son. Uh, but I like to go back to gay once in a while. I don't like to go see my family members, uh, more specifically my niece, because she's the only one in my family that's not racist. And like. Uh, I had to go see her. She's uh, four now. She's three last year. She's four now. That's how aging works. Uh, it's just weird how like uh, toddlers like interests change over time. Like because uh, last year's into things like Paw Patrol and Minnie Mouse, and this year she's into death. She loves death to the point where I had to go visit and we had to play a game called Funeral, and I played the dead body. <laughs> I just had to lay there motionless while she just sang and danced and threw a tambourine at my head. Like, I hope you have Jesus in your heart. <laughs> it's weird, it's like, uh, I'm not sure about y'all, but I've been to many a funeral in my time, and nobody's ever really been ha that happy at a funeral. And I had to think about it, I was like, well, I guess technically, like, my niece is half black. So the first funeral she went to was an all black church. It's gonna be a shame when someone on our side of family dies. Get the standard that we cannot live up to. 
Yeah, I think I can guarantee like any black beer is probably way, way better than a white wedding. That's just true. That's why the open bar is there. Uh, good day. Uh, people often mistake me like they recognize me on the street as a coat rack in the corner of a darkened room. That's, that's what I feel when I tell that joke. Oh, uh, uh, I go to therapy. Probably because they tell weird jokes like that. Like, they go to therapy sometimes. And the thing is, I went to a therapist last time. Bad prescription. I like that a lot. Uh, it wasn't my prescription. I, I don't know whose it is. I'm snatched off his desk. I tell you, it's doing me wonders right now. I like it a lot. The thing about therapy, I don't like those. Like, it takes too much time out of the day. I wish there was something more like an express therapist. You know, like, you go to a bank teller, has a mag tubes, and all of a sudden, you go and talk to him through. Say, Hello, sir. I let you go through and talk and deposit way too much on you. That's all I want to do, right? I wish it was just like a, is it too much to ask for to have a combination of therapist slash Taco Bell? I guess it's more like my alley. As it go through, ask for a dysfunctional family combo and the chicken piece tea, I treat myself afterwards. Because I feel like I earned it. Because I think I want to treat my uh, mental health the same way I treat my physical health. With just as little effort as possible. I don't want to cure anything, I just want to keep prolonging the inevitable. <laughs> Alright, speaking of reason why I go to therapy, uh, I've got all the weird sex bits now. Uh, I have sex every once in a while, every harvest moon, that's the Amish mating season. But, uh, but the thing about me is like, I can't like do sort of things and sex like other normal people can. Like, uh, I can't 69 anybody. I can, but like, I can make the girl happy, but the best thing she can do is blow raspberries in my belly, which <laughs> really kills the mood. Nobody really gets involved in that one. That's called the sad motorboat, uh, by the way. That's... Uh, speaking of other weird maneuvers I've created over time, so I'll tell you about this other one I've done. Uh, there's this one girl, and like, she wanted me to be kicky, and pick her up and fuck her against the wall. Here's the deal with me, I have very weak arms and a bad center of gravity, so I just picked her up and then slammed her to the wall. Very hard. It was a portion. I thought I'd killed her. So if I ever accidentally yet mentally do it again in the future, that's gonna be called the Dale Earnhardt. Praise hell, praise Dale! That one's for you, buddy! I think I'll make a great dad someday. <laughs> I actually have a name picked up for a kid if ever had one. That name's gonna be Bob Ross. Because anything that comes up with the result of my genetics is gonna be the result of a happy little accident. I'll tell you all that much right now. Alright, that's my time. Thank you for putting off my bullshit. Enjoy the rest of the show. And good night. Yeah. We reached our headliner for the night. Very, very funny guy. He has a YouTube channel called Safe for Work. Very funny. You should listen to it. Um, he also hosts over at Isley Brewing Company, the Open Mic on Wednesday. If you like doing comedy or want to try doing comedy, over at on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. He's hilarious. He's a newlywed. Please welcome to the stage, Brandon Beswick. Sandals with socks. Uh, I'm pretty excited about uh, getting a cat because no one can question me. Uh, I feel like except for her. And can't what's a cat adoption? Five bucks? Well, you know they told you to stop, right? <laughs> Mr. Miner, we can't give you a baker's dozen of cats. That would be irresponsible of us. Jesus, I got married. That's fucked up. 
<laughs> you know what I had to do legally to get married? What? Nothing. I went down to the bursar's office at the fucking DMV and gave them info, and they didn't even ask if we were related. I feel like base level. You should just kind of fish around a little bit for that info. You like you guys go to get a lot of family gatherings together? No? All right. Hmm. This sounds good. Um, it's a uh, it's a wild thought that uh, that <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, I do a lot of pot. Uh, you guys like weed? Yeah. It's pretty cool that like we're uh, we're we're trying to decriminalize it. I guess here in Virginia, uh, that's exciting. Uh, but. I don't know. It, it's, it's a weird thing it's taken this long. I grew up, and I, I, my parents would prepare me for other adults that had drinking problems. And they talked to me about it before you go over to another adult's house that may have an alcoholism issue. And they used to be like, hey, when we go over to your friend Billy's house, don't talk to his dad after 9 o'clock. He gets a little angry. And, uh, and, you know, that was the truth. I remember one New Year's Eve we asked about batteries. Uh, around 10.30 and he threw a glass across the room. <laughs> so like, this was something that made sense. No one ever prepped me for any of my friends' parents who were potheads. There was no need to, because those were the best parents' houses to hang out at. <laughs> All right? I didn't realize that my neighbor smoked a bunch of pot, but as soon as I was like 13 and getting high and that smell hit my face, I was like, holy shit, Pete's closet. And everything clicked in. I was like, you know, my friend Miles' his dad, Pete, was great. He used to play video games with us constantly. Uh, he used to put on cool music and make us, like, perfect to Tino's pizza rolls. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit, he was just a grade-A dad who was high. Uh, and he never once threw a plate across the room. He carried it gently. <laughs> full of to Tino's pizza rolls. Yeah. If you ask him a question, no matter what time of day, he had a good answer, and if my annoying ass asked him about Zelda, he'd be like, well, listen, let me get the player's guide, uh, and we'll sit down and discuss whatever we need to, Brandon. I know it's a troubling time in Hyrule. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, God. When I was a kid, I used to play Duck Hunt for hours. That's not a joke. That's just where... That's how easy it was to entertain children. All you needed to do was give them a fake gun and a dog uh, and a duck. This is my TED talk on Robert Paulson. Um, I thought I was going to be a camper when I was a kid, and what does that mean? I don't know, but I was prepared to go camping at any time, anywhere. I don't know what that is, but something in me was like, I need pots and pans that can be washed in a creek. Uh, and freeze-dried food. I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm just trying to figure it out, guys. Uh, you read Hatchet twice, and the next thing you know, you're like, I should be prepared to kill for the people I love. Uh, I hate wine. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, but it makes me feel like less of an adult. Because uh, I'm always presented with glasses of wine everywhere I go. Um, and recently I had to I asked if I wanted red wine. I asked if they had Sprite instead. And I was like, oh my god. They let me file taxes. What the fuck? I'm 32 years old. And I just said, well, I'd love a Sprite if you have one. Also, if you could bring me some Twizzlers so I could use a straw. Um, <laughs> what the fuck? How? There's a generation of us. They like weed and sweet candy uh, and have never watched 60 Minutes. Uh, we're going to expect you to run this country, uh, and I'm excited about that. Um, I am really excited about it. Uh, I, uh, I, I'd love to fund the roads with weed. That would be fun. Um, I'd love to make roads out of weed. I think that also would be fun. I think about weed a lot, I think, is the problem, mostly when I'm driving. Um, <laughs> I used to have a lot of girlfriends that said mean things to me. They used to say things like, Brandon, your dick's too small. <laughs> or Brandon, you come too quickly. And I'd have to remind them, I'm just built for anal sex. Um, <laughs> I used to wear sweatpants a lot when I lived in a house full of roommates uh, because it, uh, it allows your uh, penis to add to your expression. Uh, I feel like you can really uh, enunciate uh, and exclamate 
<laughs> sentences when you're wearing sweatpants. Uh, but my roommate uh, said it made me very weird. And I had to always like remind my roommates, like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm weird, but I'm not like kill you in your sleep weird. Uh, I'm like wear your, your nightgown and high heels when you're out of town weird. Um, you come home, you're like, why does it smell like this? Why is my nightie so stretched out? And I'm like, me, guilty as charged. I had several gin and tonics, and wanted to look like uh, uh, the Krumpus. No, what's the guy from Odd Real Monsters? God damn it. Um, uh, you guys ever get really high and try to remember Odd Real Monsters stuff in front of eight people on a Sunday night? I told my dad I was doing a show at 10.30 tonight. He goes, do people come to that? I go, probably not. Uh, <laughs> uh, he'll disown me. He will. Uh, he asked me about mortgage stuff today. I said, Dad, I have a weed pen in my pocket, and I, I really want to watch the NBA. I don't know if I'm in the right headspace for talking about home ownership. Uh, get back to me after I waste some money off this, uh, this Lakers game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they didn't cover! Uh, all right! Um, can I borrow a hundred dollars from anybody? My wife is gonna kill me. Uh, that's a phrase I'm getting very used to. Uh, <laughs> I snore in my sleep, uh, and she records it and tries to play it for me. And that's not fair, uh, because I'm not choosing to snore in my sleep. That is a symptom of a larger problem. And if she thinks that me hearing it is going to get me to be like, well, you know what? Now that I hear it, uh, I'll knock it off. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. Uh, it, it's a symptom of, I die during the night. I assume that's what's happening. I'm not a doctor anymore. They took my coat away. Uh, but I'm dying while I'm sleeping. That's why I make these noises. And then her recording and showing to me is not helpful. It's like if a child had leukemia and you kept being like, you're clogging the drain with your hair, it's a problem. <laughs> it's not helpful to the issue at hand. He needs a better diet and a support system. Me too! <laughs> Relationships are easy. Uh, <laughs> I find if you come home with candy, everyone's happy. Uh, because your sugar spikes and then you just fall asleep. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I, 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 I used to, um, uh, have a doctor's coat and a prescription pad, uh, but they stopped taking it, um, because I started filling it out in crayon, uh, and people get real tentative. Like, I do, this does, this is official, and it does say a thousand talons, uh, but you can't, this isn't crayon. Um, you can't have that. You just have the fentanyl patches, that's it. On the toes, nobody knows, baby. All right, uh, opioids, you know what I'm talking about? Those things that make you not poop? Um, I'm such an old man that when they give me pain pills, that's what I ask, I ask for uh, laxatives, uh, and I also ask for anti-nausea medicine, because I'm a pussy, and whenever I take pain pills, I'm like, oh, yeah, oh, 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 oh. Ooh, the room is spinning. People like that. I don't, I like cocaine, you know what I mean? I don't like going down, I like going up. I smoke crack. Who said that? Um, you guys ever done meth? I did accidentally the first time I did coke. Uh, I lived in Montana. I went to Montana State University for school. Uh, and I was with these dirtbag kids uh, and, uh, in, in a place called Cutbank, Montana. Uh, population, I believe, 9,000. Uh, it has a giant penguin uh, because it gets cold. I don't know. Uh, and we did coke one night, quote unquote, um, and we stayed up for 10 hours straight watching Grateful Dead like videos and shit like that. It was ridiculous. And I was like, okay, that's cocaine. You do a very small line, you're up for 10 hours. Uh, and then I came home to Virginia and did cocaine with my cool friends uh, and was like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> uh, this doesn't last nearly as long and I'm hungry after about an hour. Uh, <laughs> and all it's helping me do is be more of an asshole while I drink this is not the cocaine from Montana. And then it hit me like a, 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 a sack of um, meth. Uh, <laughs> so if anyone knows where to get any. Uh, 
All right, I'll leave you guys with this. Um, I used to play uh, sports as a child. Uh, I played football uh, throughout my, uh, my adolescent life. Uh, but around 10th grade, I got tired of getting beat up for wearing SpongeBob shirts and smoking weed. So football was no longer an option for me. So I stopped doing football and I decided to do theater. Uh, and I had to tell my dad that I was quitting to do theater. And that was a big deal because his dad played football. Uh, you know, my brother played football. He, he played football and he was like obsessed with it. So I had to tell him myself. Uh, I never remember, forget uh, coming home to do it. Um, I was 16, so at the time uh, I was committing uh, petty larceny uh, and huffing the cleaner out of the uh, canister for computer duster uh, in the aisles of Walmart. Because if you do it there, you don't have to pay for it as a pro tip. Um, but I remember coming home, my dad's on the back porch smoking a cigarette. I'm like, all right, it's time to do it. I walk outside, I'm like, Dad? He's like, Brandon? I'm like, Dad, I need to talk to you. He goes, that's fine, sit down. What's going on? I'm like, Dad, I'm tired of football. I get beat up for bright colored shirts. Uh, and because I'm, 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 I'm uh, gregarious, I guess, I don't know. And it's like, probably because you use words like gregarious. So Dad, I'm done with football. I'm doing theater. I quit football, I'm doing theater. And he's kind of looking at me, took a deep drag from a cigarette. <laughs> theater? <laughs> no, Brandon, we're best of us. We do real life things. Things that make us sweat, things that make us bleed. We don't get on stage, paint our face, and say, look at me, I'm in theater. I love drama. Whoa. We're not dramatic people, Brandon. No, see, I remember when I first held you in my hands, eight pounds, six ounce baby boy, and said, this, this son will bring me a football championship. And now you say, no, daddy, no. I want theater. I love the stage. <laughs> no, Brandon, nay! We are not dramatic people as I stare out into the stars above me. Each star twinkling with its own story, its own God, divining life, taking, giving. They all look down upon me and say, You, sir, one of your earthbound son. And I say back unto them, Ah, oh, son! Ah! Oh! I have no son! <laughs> Guys, I have a brand new cool message. Keep it going, Mary Hope. Mike and Francesca! Yeah. 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 Of course. One more time for the Billy Wade! Yeah. Brandon and Wade! Thank you for our show. We're here every second Sunday of the month. Thanks for coming out, everybody. I hope y'all